Hello everyone, this is Al Red Sox fan coming to you from Al Red Sox fan YouTube channel. Hope all is well. We're going to bring you some PC replay baseball and continue our 1919 Chicago White Sox taking on the 1975 Cincinnati Reds game four. Our beloved 1919 White Sox trail two games to one. Game four here at Comiskey Park. The Pale Holes look to tie the series up. The 1919 White Sox, who lost or threw the World Series against the Reds, will take another crack at Cincinnati. However, this time, it is the Big Red Machine of the 1975 World Series champs. Well, let's get to the lineups and play some PC replay baseball. Leading off for the Cincinnati Reds of 1975, who lead the series two games to one, best of seven. Pete Rose, he's at third base, followed by Ken Griffey in right field. Joe Morgan's at second, he bats third. Johnny Bench is the cleanup hitter and does the catching. Tony Perez at first, batting sixth in left field, George Foster. Cesar Geronimo is in center. Davey Concepcion bats eighth and plays shortstop. Gary Nolan is doing the pitching, and he will bat ninth for the Cincinnati Reds. For our beloved Chicago White Sox of 1919, Nemo Liebold will once again lead things off in right field. Happy Felch. We've moved him up to the second spot because Eddie Collins is only batting Point zero eight three, so Happy Felch in center bats second. Buck Weaver bats third, plays third. The cleanup hitter Shoeless Joe Jackson's in left. Chick Gandell at first, batting sixth as he drops some spots. The second baseman Eddie Collins. Ray Shock does the catching. Swede Risberg bats eighth, plays short. Eddie Seacott, who lost game one, looks to tie the series up here in game four in Chicago. Again, I will be playing as the Chicago White Sox of 1919. To Comiskey Park we go. Joining us here at Comiskey, a big Reds fan, Philip Reynolds, and Uncle Dave Gardner. He just had a Stratomatic PC hockey game up. Check that out. And of course, check out Digital Dice with Ron Juckett and Dave Gardner on Spreaker or wherever fine podcasts can be listened to. To Comiskey Park we go. So Eddie Seacott on the mound is a three defender, 51 error. Behind the plate, Ray Shock is a five range, which is very good for a catcher. Infield, you want the lower number. The catcher in outfield, you want the higher number. Shock is a five range, five arm, 35 error. Chick Gandell is a one. 64 at first. Eddie Collins is a 153 at second. Risberg and Weaver are twos on the left side. Risberg 31 error. Weaver a 36. Shoeless Joe Jackson, four range, four arm, 51 error in left. Happy Felch, four range, five arm, 36 error in center. And Nemo Liebold, four range, I'm sorry, three range, four arm, 22 error. Pete Rose steps to the plate. Charlie Hustle in the series is batting 455 and two ribbies. Switch hitter batting lefty against Eddie Seacott. Seacott took the loss in game one. Overall, Seacott was 29 and 7 with a save, 1.82 ERA with a .99 whip. Here's the pitch to Charlie Hustle. Ball game on its way. And that's a line shot to Leibold in right. He makes the catch one down. So Rose hit it on the screws. But what, right at Nemo and right. If you're unfamiliar with this game, columns one and two off the cards give a give an advantage to the pitcher. Obviously, if it's a poor pitcher, not much of an advantage. Columns three and six, advantage for the hitter. Six column is the home run column plus extra bases, but you can also get that on the three. Column four is infield defense. Column five is pitcher's control. So just remember that when you see the red dice rolled. One, two, better for the pitcher. Three, six, better for the hitter. 
four, infield defense, five, pitcher control. Here we go. Ken Griffey steps to the plate. He's struggled so far. The right fielder who bats lefty, 167. Seacott sends the flutter ball fourth. And that is a single to right. So Griffey finds the hole between Collins and Gandell. One out, one on for Joe Morgan. Morgan, one ribby, 182 batting average. Little Joe's waiting. Shock sets the defense in the infield. They're looking for a double play, the White Sox are. Seacott's ready. Slide step to the plate. Morgan with a 32, and he walks. So Eddie Seacott with the scuff ball and the spitter doesn't work there. One out, two on for Johnny Bench. Bench with three ribbies, only batting 214. Seacott again hopes for the double play ball. Schalk sets the target, the pitch to his counterpart, Johnny Bench. It's the two column. That ball is hit out to center. Happy Felch on the run. He will... He needs a one through three to make the catch, and he can't get there. It drops in, diving attempt by Happy Felch. Griffey, will they wave him? No. Felch quickly gets up and fires it back in. Base is juiced. One out for Tony Perez. White Sox in a pickle here. Charlie Comiskey chopping on his cigar. Unhappy with his squad. Here's the pitch to Perez batting 214 with a ribby. The pitch to TP Tony Perez. And he's going to whiff. He's going to whiff at the flutter ball. Two down. Seacott one out from getting out of this mess, but he has to face, speak softly, carry a big boomstick, George Foster. Foster, 273 and two ribbies, no homers. He's walked twice, struck out three times. Griffey at third, Morgan at second, Bench at first, and the Reds will be off and running on contact with two outs. Foster digs in the right-hander's batter's box. Shock goes through the sign. Seacott quickly nods his head. The Massachusetts native deals to Foster. Swing and a miss at the flutter ball. So Seacott strikes out Perez and Foster with the bases loaded. And that's just how the Reds leave him. Bases loaded. Bottom of the first. Due up for the White Sox. Niebold, Felch, and Weaver to face Gary Nolan. Nolan getting his first start. In the series, yep, this is his first start. I just want to make sure. In actuality, Nolan went 15 to 9 with a 3.16 ERA and a 1.10 whip. Nolan, a three defensive range on the mound with a 66 error. That's pretty good. Johnny Bench behind the plate, 5-range, 6-arm, 44-error. Perez at first, 3-range, 46-error. Morgan's a 154. Concepcion's a 146. Rose at third is a 335. Foster in left, 5-range, five 5-arm, five 62-error. Very good outfielder, George Foster in 1975. Geronimo in center, 5-range, five 5-arm, five 53-error. Another excellent outfielder in center. And Ken Griffey, before he was known as senior, Ken Griffey, three range, three arm, 25 era in right. So here's Nemo Liebold batting 333 with a ribby. Left handed stick, Nolan a righty. He rocks and deals to Nemo Liebold. Liebold 33, and he missed a fat pitch to hit over anxious on the hanging breaking pitch, pops it up. Joe Morgan, the second baseman, makes the catch. One down. Oh, Nemo Liebold had an opportunity and missed it. Happy Felch moves up to the two spot to try to get this offense moving. Felch batting 333 with four ribbies. Switch hitter, no, uh, right handed bat, excuse me, to face Nolan. Nolan rocks and deals to Happy Felch. Felch, 16. That is a shot to center field. Felch tries to stretch it into a double, and Cesar Geronimo... Actually, Felch tries to stretch it into a triple, and Cesar Geronimo throws him out. Pete Rose applies the tag with one out 
and the center fielder is an arm a five arm scored as a double batter out at third trying for a triple oh horrible base running there by happy felch he got the hit just what the white Sox and charlie comiskey wanted but try to stretch it into a triple two outs base is empty jake cruz has joined us here at comiskey park jake says now i get to see my reds win and he says you're not watching my dolphins no but i did pick your dolphins in my football pool. Two outs, base is empty for Buck Weaver. 182, no ribbies. Weaver would like to bust out. Switch hitter batting lefty. Bench sets the target, the pitch to Buck Weaver. Weaver with a 15, and he singles up the middle. And there's where the poor base running decision by Happy Felch comes into play. He probably would have scored on that single. Instead, it's two outs. And Weaver is at first. Boy, Felch really getting a stern chewing out by the manager in the dugout. Weaver will be off on contact. Shulish Joe Jackson, 308, and a ribby. Nolan's ready to work. The pitch to the Shulish one, Joe Jackson. Joe Jackson, 21. Fly ball to center field. Going back to his left, Geronimo makes the catch. The side is retired. We're through one here at Comiskey. No score. Top of the second. Due up for the Reds. Geronimo, Concepcion, and Nolan. If anyone gets on the top of the order, Pete Rose. Highly Heyday has joined us here at Comiskey. Check out that wonderful channel. Hope all is well to Highly Heyday, Jake Cruz, Dave Gardner, Philip Reynolds, and those who will watch now or later. Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. Happy New Year. Here's Cesar Geronimo. Geronimo, so far in three games, batting 583 and three ribbies. Seacott hopes to cool off the flaming hot Cesar Geronimo. Geronimo digs in the left-hander's batter's box. Seacott sends the flutter ball fourth. 15. Line shot right at Collins at second. One down. So again, Geronimo strikes the ball well, but right at Eddie Collins. Davy Concepcion, smooth fielding shortstop, steps to the plate. Right-handed batter, batting 250, no ribbies. Shock goes through the sign. Seacott nods his head. The slow delivery and the pitch to Concepcion. 33 on the three column. Line shot to Lee Bolden, right. Nemo makes the catch. Two down. That will bring up the Cincinnati Red pitcher, Gary Nolan, who batted 176 in 1975. Seacott deals quickly to his counterpart, Gary Nolan. Nolan slaps it to right. The blooper drops in front of Liebold. The inning stays alive for Pete Rose. Rose 0 for 1. The pitch to Charlie Hustle. And that's hit out to right field. Can Liebold get there? And he does. What a nice running catch to right center by Nemo Liebold, and the side is retired. The 60 with the raised one. You had to have really a horrific outfielder out there. Um, only a one fielder, and that would have been a double, but Liebold is a three, so he makes the fine running catch with his range. Bottom of the second, no score here at Comiskey. Reds lead the series, two games to one, best of seven. It will be Gandel, Collins, and Shock. Chick Gandel, batting 250 with a run knocked in. He awaits the Nolan offering. He's ready to grip and rip from the right-hander's batter's box. The pitch from Nolan to Chick Gandel. 44. Leaping catch by Concepcion at short. Oh, he robbed Chick Gandel of a hit. Gandel, none too happy, kicks at the dirt. One out for Eddie Collins. Collins is dropped from the two slot to the six slot as he's batting .083. Left-handed stick. Bench sets up inside. Nolan rocks and deals to Eddie Collins. That's a fly ball. And he gets a good piece of it. It's a ripped liner for a single. So column four reverts to column six on 
on when Eddie Collins faces Gary Nolan. So he rips a single the other way to left. One out, one on for Ray Schock. Risberg on deck. We're going to play hit and run. That's a 28. And it's a fly ball to Geronimo. Quickly racing back to first is Eddie Collins. Two outs. Collins will be off on contact. Here's Swede Risberg, 222 with two ribbies. Risberg, a right-handed batter, faces the right-handed hurler, Gary Nolan. Nolan peaks to first. Now in at bench. The pitch to Swede Risberg. Risberg, 21. Fly ball to center. Geronimo's there. The side is retired. Top of the third. No score here in Kamitsky. 75 Reds lead the series two games to one over the 1919 White Sox. Due up for Cincinnati. Griffey, Morgan, and Bench to face Eddie Seacott. Ken Griffey, one for one with a single. Here's the pitch to Griffey from Seacott. That's a 14 off the three column. He lines it to Buck Weaver who snares it for out number one. Little Joe Morgan steps to the plate. He walked in his first at-bat. Shock sets the target to pitch to Morgan. Morgan bounces it to Eddie Collins. Collins has it over to Chick Gandell for out number two, as that was the four column, so that is infield defense. Two outs, base is empty for the dangerous Johnny Bench, 267 with three ribbies. He's single in his first plate appearance here in game four. Seacott rubs up the baseball, steps back up on the hill. The slow windup and the pitch to Bench. Here's the flutter ball. Bench, 44, grounds it back to Seacott, who throws the Gandell. The side is retired. Bench beats the flutter ball into the dirt. Bottom of the third, no score here at Comiskey. Due up for the 1919 White Sox. Seacott, then the top of the order, Lee Bold and Felch. If anyone gets on, Bucky Weaver. Seacott batted 202 in actuality. Hitless in game one. Here's the pitch to Eddie Seacott. That's a grounder to Concepcion. He comes charging in, fires a strike to Perez for out number one in the bottom of the third. Top of the order, Nemo Liebold. 0 for 1, he popped out to Morgan. Nolan, he's ready. He kicks and fires. Liebold, 2 column, 55, bounces it to Morgan. Morgan throws to Perez, 2 away. Base is empty with 2 outs for Happy Felch. Felch doubled and was thrown out at 3rd by Geronimo when he tried to stretch it into a triple. The pitch to Felch. And he flies out to right. He reached for a pitch high and outside. Griffey makes the catch. We go to the top of the fourth, still scoreless here in Chicago. Due up for the 75 big red machine, the Cincinnati Reds, Perez, Foster, and Geronimo. Seacott back up on the bump. Eddie has given up three hits but no runs. The pitch to Tony Perez, who struck out his first time up. That is a hard hit ball to Bucky Weaver, who fires a strike to Chick Gandell. One out. George Foster steps to the plate. He, too, was a strikeout victim of Seacott. Foster looking to boom with the stick. Seacott will send the scuff ball. It's an eight. Foster has a pitch to grip and rip. One column possible homer. Instead, it is a line shot single to center. So Foster struck it well, single to center. One out, one on. White Sox playing for two in the infield. Cesar Geronimo, the number seven batter, 0 for 1. He lined out to Collins. The pitch to Geronimo. 48. Seacott takes the dribbler going towards first and just races towards the bag and steps on it. Advancing to second is Foster. Two outs. Foster at second. He'll be off on contact. Here's Davey Concepcion. We will not pitch Concepcion with two outs. We will intentionally walk him and face Gary Nolan. Though Nolan did bloop in a single. Here's the pitch to Gary Nolan. Can he help his own cause? Two outs, two on. Seacott deals to his counterpart, Gary Nolan. 
Unbelievable. Oh, he missed the fat breaking pitch. Pops out to Chick Gandell at first. Oh, Gary Nolan was very over anxious. His eyes were as big as a child on Christmas Day. And he pops out on a hanging flutter ball that didn't flutter so much to Chick Gandell. Cincinnati strands two. Bottom of the fourth, still scoreless here in Comiskey. Game four, Reds lead two games to one. Due up for the White Sox of 1919. Buck Weaver, Shoeless Joe Jackson, and Chick Gandell. Buck Weaver, one for one, his one hit a single. Switch hitter batting lefty. Bench wiggles the fingers. Nolan nods his head. He rocks and deals to Buck Weaver. Weaver, three column, 33. Line shot to Griffey and right. One down. It's been some hard hit balls by both teams, but nothing to show for it. That'll bring up Shoeless Joe Jackson, who flew out to Geronimo in center in his first at bat. The pitch to Jackson. Jackson sends that ball deep to right. Griffey at the track. Makes the catch for out number two. So Shoeless Joe... Ja oh, yeah, you can see the four column. So on a 4-5 and a 4-2 off the Nolan card, it goes to C6, so that's where you go to column six. So he, he has a chance. He must have given up homers. I would think that's why that's there, but his home run columns are ones. Eight, like an eight and a nine. Eight plus one's a nine. That's a home run swing sometimes. So. Two outs, base is empty for Chick Gandell. He's 0 for 1, lined out to Concepcion at short. Davey made a leaping catch. Nolan's ready to work. The pitch to Chicky Gandell. Gandell, ballpark effect. Out or a single. He needs a four or better for the single. And making the diving catch in left. Coming in is George Foster. Unbelievable catch by George Foster. We stay scoreless to the top of the fifth. Neil Hodgkinson has joined us from South Africa. And he says, Merry Christmas. I had a good Christmas. Hope you did. And this is the second time we've seen Neil Hodgkinson here in our chat what's the weather in south africa my friend it's cold here in massachusetts on the east coast of the united states could be worse though could be worse not complaining so most excellent to see you neil hodgkinson top of the order for the reds here in the top of the fifth rose griffey and morgan to face eddie seacott seacott so far four innings no runs, three hits. The pitch to Charlie Hustle, who's 0 for 2. Two flyouts to right. Rose will walk. So Rose at first. And the pitch by Seacott. Possible wild pitch. And Shock blocks the plate. You can see Seacott with a 6. He basically would have to roll a 6 for the wild pitch, I believe. Or he can't throw a while. Actually, I think it's a six. So, Shock does a good job blocking the ball in the dirt. Rose takes a slight lead. White Sox playing for two in the infield. Once again, the pitch to Griffey. Griffey squares the bunt. He'll bunt it to Buck Weaver. Weaver puts the charge on. Weaver. It's going to be a bang, bang play. Hey. And he is safe. Unbelievable. A beautiful bunt by Ken Griffey. He wanted just to get the sacrifice, but he placed it so well, he got the hit on top of it. That's what you call a happy bonus. As you can see, his speed is a 5, so we would have to roll a 6 to get him. No outs, 2 on for little Joe Morgan. The pitch to Morgan, who has walked and grounded out. That's a fly ball to Nemo Liebold. Liebold on the move, and he can't get there. It bounces away, and Morgan slides into third. 
with a triple that clears the bases 2-0 Cincinnati. So Nemo Liebold could not get there. He made a diving attempt. As the defense was not higher, it was equal. And his arm... Nemo's arm is a 4. Morgan's speed is a 5. So he stretches it into a triple. The Cubs, the Bears. How you doing, my friend? He says, South Africans are a bore. Ba -boom -boom. Well... If you know your history, you know what the Cubs, the Bears is saying. Well, the Boers Dutch. I can't remember. I think the Boers were Dutch. So no outs. Morgan stands at third. Here's the pitch to bench. He's one for two with a single. That's a fly ball. To Liebold, Morgan scores from third, 3-0. More boos rain down here at Comiskey upon their ball club. As the Reds hope to take a 3-1 lead in this best of seven. One out for Tony Perez. Seacott's got to settle down. Three runs seems like a ton with this Chicago White Sox team. They don't score many runs in these types of series. A pitch to Perez, 21 Flies out to Felch in center. Two outs. George Foster steps to the plate. He struck out in single. The pitch to the boom bat. Chopper to Weaver. Weaver throws the Gandell. The side is retired. But the Reds strike for three. The big hit. The triple by little Joe Morgan down the right field line. When Liebold made a diving attempt. Missed it. It got by him. And Morgan knocked in two. Bottom of the fifth, three-nothing Reds. White Sox trying to get something going here. They'll have to do it with Collins, Shock, and Risberg. Eddie Collins, one for one. Nolan spotted a three-run lead. Can he hold it? Here's the pitch to easy Eddie Collins, or cocky Eddie Collins. And that is going to be a single to left as he slaps the ball to left. So we drop Collins down in the order. He has two hits now. Collins at first. Ray Schalk, the catcher, comes to the plate. 0 for 1. He flew out to center. The pitch to Schalk. Schalk will walk. Oh, no. Two balls. Two balls. First base occupied. Reds infield looking for a double play ball off the bat of Schalk. We're going to play hit and run. 17. Ground ball to third. Rose goes to first. Collins advances to second. Rose thought about throwing to Morgan for the force out, but took the sure out with a three-run lead to Perez. Collins in scoring position for Swede Risberg. Seacott on deck. Can Swede knock in his third run of the series? Nolan to the Swede. 16! Single to right! Wave Eddie Collins! Wave him! Ugh, they hold him. So Griffey puts on a good charge. Runners on the corners. You're not going to take out Eddie Seacat in the fifth. Yeah. Now we got to go to our bullpen, which stinks. Can't take out Eddie Seacat in the fifth, even if you're down 3 nothing. Now, can't do it. Not going to do it. Do we squeeze? No. Do we sack? Seacott's going to sack. He squares the bunt. Bunts it towards Rose at third. And it's a good bunt. Rose goes to Perez, holding at third base was Eddie Collins. So two outs, second and third. Nemo Liebold wants to make up for his diving miss in right that allowed two runs to score and Morgan to have a triple. He wants a three or a six on that red dot. Nolan is ready. Looks in at bench. He deals to Nemo Liebold. 
Infield defense. That's a 20. It's going to be a bang, bang play at first. Liebold needs a one or a six. And he is out. What a play by little Joe Morgan ranging to his right on the ball. Quickly flips to Perez who makes the stretch and they just nip Liebold for out number three. The White Sox are denied a run once again. Top of the six, 3 nothing Cincinnati. They lead the series 2-1. to one. For the Reds, it'll be Geronimo, Concepcion, and Nolan. If anyone gets on, Charlie Hustle, Pete Rose. Seat cut to Geronimo, who is 0 for 2. And that's a chopper to Eddie Collins. He's 0 for 3. Collins easily retires, Geronimo. One out. Davey Concepcion steps to the plate. Davey is 0 for 1 with an intentional walk. Seacott sends the flutter ball to Concepcion. Concepcion swing and a miss. It's nothing but air. Two outs, base is empty for the pitcher, Gary Nolan. Seacott quickly to Nolan. Chopper to Collins. Collins to Gandell. Ooh, Collins might be bobbles the ball, but he will make the play. So Collins bobbled the ball, had trouble getting it out of his glove, but still gets Gary Nolan by a step and a half. One, two, three, go the Reds. Bottom of the six, three nothing Cincinnati. Due up for the 1919 White Sox, Felch, Weaver, and Jackson. Happy Felch doubled, but was thrown out trying to stretch it into a triple, and that cost. The White Sox a possible run when Buck Weaver singled. And he's flown out to right. Nolan trying to maintain this 3-0 lead. Deals to Happy Felch. Felch, 25. Single to right. Griffey trying to cut it off. And he boots the ball. And Felch races to second. It'll be a single and a one-base error on Griffey. Because Griffey's error rating is a 25, and the die, dice roll was a 44. It's higher, so it's an error. Is, this is the break that the White Sox need. They have to take advantage of it. Here's Bucky Weaver. Weaver's one for two. Is one hit, a single. The pitch to the switch hitting Weaver. Weaver, fly ball, and it's a single. It drops in front of Geronimo. We will hold. We will hold. With no outs, we're going to hold because we have Shoeless Joe Jackson coming up. Reds will give up the run for the double play. Shoeless Joe Jackson has flown to center and flown to right. Big moment here for the Chicago White Sox trying to get back in this game. They're down 3 nothing. bottom of the six. They trail in the series two games to one. Bench goes out to have a word with Nolan. Rose... Perez join him on the mound. Umpire breaks up the conference. Players back to their position. The pitch from Nolan to Shoeless Joe Jackson. And he walks Shoeless Joe Jackson. Bases are juiced with no outs. And we have some life here at Comiskey. Nolan deals. Bench will attempt to block this ball. It needs to be a six. And Bench blocks it. A six would have advanced all the runners, but Johnny Bench blocks it. As Gary Nolan's wild pitch factor is a five. So it has to be a six or better. Or it has to be a six. Can't be better. Jackson. Uh, Chick Gandell steps back in the batter's box. He's 0 for 2. Felch at third. Weaver at second. Jackson at first. 3 nothing Cincinnati. Bottom of the sixth. The pitch to Chick Gandell. Chicky with a 21 flies to center. And it's deep enough to score Happy Felch. The White Sox are on the board. It is 3-1. So Felch picks up. I'm sorry, Chick Gandell picks up his second ribby. One out. Weaver at second. Jackson at first for Eddie Collins. Collins is two for two. He was dropped to the sixth spot and he's responding. The pitch to cocky Eddie Collins. 
Rare play. Will it be the dreaded dribbler to the mound? No, we're going to see what this rare play is. Manager's option. Offensive manager may elect to call for a sacrifice bunt. No, 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 no. So a six would be a single. The only crappy roll is a four, but we need no. No bunt. Swing away. The pitch to Collins. 49. And he singles to right. Weaver should score. He does. Jackson goes first to third. So Eddie Collins is three for three since being dropped to the sixth spot here in game four. Three, two now Reds. White Sox. Jackson at third, 90 feet away from tying the game. Collins at first, the go-ahead run for the catcher Ray Shock. Shock 0 for 2. In 1919, he did bat 282. The pitch to Schalk. Two Collins. Oh, could it drop in? Foster racing over to make the catch. We need a six. It's a five. Foster makes the catch. Will Jackson score? No. As Foster quickly fires towards the plate. They didn't send Shoeless Joe Jackson. Two outs. Tying run still at third. What a catch by Foster. That's where that five range comes in. Swede Risberg. At the plate, Seacott on deck. Will they walk Swede? I doubt it. Nolan deals to Swede Risberg. Risberg, 34. Oh, he gets under it, flares it to center. Geronimo coming in, makes the catch. The side is retired. The White Sox do score two, but they squander a golden opportunity. We go to the top of the seventh. The 75 Reds, three. The 1919 Chicago Pale Hose, two. Seacott back up on the bump. It's a one-run deficit now for the White Sox, and Seacott has to keep it that way. Top of the order, Rose, Griffey, and Morgan. Charlie Hustle is 0 for 2 with a walk. The pitch to Pete Rose from Eddie Seacott. Rose swings the stick, grounds it to Gandell. Gandell flips to Seacott. For out number one. Here's Ken Griffey, the right fielder. He's two for three. A solid single, a line out to third, and a bunt single on a sack. Seacott nods his head. Schalk sets the target. The pitch to Griffey. Griffey swings. Chopper to deep short. Risberg. Possible error. It's going to be a single. Will it roll away from him? And it does, and Griffey goes to second as it rolls out in a shallow left center. So here come the Reds with one out, Griffey in scoring position. Little Joe Morgan at the plate, he tripled in two runs in the top of the fifth after Liebold made a diving attempt to no avail. The pitch to Morgan. Let's see if Seacott walks him. And he does. We needed a two or lower. We rolled a three. So Seacott, who threw a lot of junk, walks Morgan. But this does set up the double play ball that can get us out of the inning. Johnny Bench singled, popped, uh, grounded to first, and flew to right. But the fly ball to right was a sack fly for the ribby. Griffey at second, Morgan at first, Bench at the plate. Seacott. Sends the flutter ball forth to Johnny Bench. Bench to Collins. This could be a double play. And it is. Collins pivots, fires to Risberg. Return throw to Chick Gandell. 4 6 3. The side is retired. We go to the bottom of the seventh. 3 2 Cincinnati. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jacks. I don't care if I ever go back for its root, root, root for the White Sox. If they lose, it's a shame. Or they threw it. For its one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball game. The Cubs, the Bears, says Ray Shock, lived in the Chicago area after retirement. He spoke 
had our little league banquet one year, but we were too young to appreciate his historical his historical significance in baseball history. I am that old. Well, that's a pretty cool story, the Cubs, the Bears, the Great White Shark. So Seacott, and again, I'd hate to pinch hit for Eddie Seacott. He's got three batters, possibly more left in him. We're only down one, but we trail in the series two games to one. If we pinch hit Seacott, we got to come with Dickie Kerr or the other guy. I can't come with Lefty Williams. Well, yeah, could go with Lefty Williams out of the pen also. But I was hoping to win this game. He pitched Lefty Williams in game five. We're going to let Seacott swing. And that was a bad decision. Swing and a miss. One out. Top of the order, Nemo Liebold's hitless. Nolan protecting that one-run lead. Deals to Nemo Liebold. Liebold swings. Grounds it to Morgan, who throws to Perez. Two down. Happy Felch. And that. how big is Felch being thrown out? In his first at bat, in the first inning, at third, when he tried to stretch a double into a triple, Buck Weaver singled in the next at bat. And that's a run right there. We could be tied at three. Other than that, he's two for three a double, a fly out to right, and a single. Trying to keep the inning alive, get it to Buck Weaver and Shoeless Joe Jackson. But for that to happen, Felch first has to get on. Here's the pitch to Happy Felch from Gary Nolan. Felch reaches for it and flies out to right. That was a ball. He chased out of the zone. Top of the eighth, 3-2 Cincinnati. Seacott back up on the mound. He has to keep this game a one-run game. Seacott to face Tony Perez, George Foster, and Cesar Geronimo. Perez. Hitless with a strikeout. The pitch to TP, Tony Perez. Perez, 34, and he rips a shot to center over the head of Happy Felch for a double. Here's George Foster. Foster is struck out, singled, and grounded out. I don't think Foster will be bunted. The pitch to Silent George with the boomstick. Oh, God. And that's a single to center. Perez will hold as Felch fires it in. Sparky Anderson doesn't take a chance. Foster looks like he's stealing. Let's see what happens here. And he holds. Didn't get the jump. We're going to play the infield in. Can't give up another run. Here's Cesar Geronimo. We need a strikeout. Seacott to Geronimo. Geronimo looking for his first hit. And fourth ribby of the series. Strikes him out. Yes. That is huge. He got him on the scuff ball. And that boosts the confidence of Eddie Seacott, who now can pitch to six more batters. Double play gets us out of the inning. Do we play for two or do we play the infield in? We could play corners in if they hit it to the corners. I would assume Perez would hold. Well, with Nolan on deck, they probably, I would think, if you the, the computer should have the contact play, even though you can't call for the contact play infield in can't let that fourth run score we have to keep it a one run deficit Davy Concepcion is lying to right was intentionally walking struck out he's 0 for 2 Seacott to Concepcion that ball's hit the Lee bold Liebold racing over towards the line. Unbelievable. We need a miracle one. And it's going to drop in. Perez scores. Foster holds at second. 
And it's 4-2. to two. Seacott deals quickly to Nolan, who's 1-3. for three. Nolan squares the bunt. Gandell charging from first. Will make the play. Foster advances to Concepcion. Gandell shuffled the ball to Seacott, who stepped on first and quickly pivoted to see where Foster was at third. Two outs, two on top of the order. Pete Rose. Rose is hitless. And that's how Eddie Seacott and the White Sox want to keep it. Though the Reds do get that huge insurance run. The pitch to Charlie Hustle. That is a ball to Risberg. A 13. Risberg possible error. He's got to stay under a 31. And he does. Risberg bobbles it. Fires to Chip Gandell. And they nip Rose at first. And he gets a nice round of applause from the fans. Pete Vukovic will go in for Pete Rose. Or is it George Vukovic? Well, it's Vukovic. And is it Pete Vukovic? Look here. John Vukovic. Okay. He goes in at third. He has better range, but his error rating is horrible at an 11. Nolan with a two-run lead, bottom of the eighth. He will face Weaver, Jackson, and Gandell. If anyone gets on, Eddie Collins, who's having quite a good game. Here's the pitch to Buck Weaver. Weaver is two for three. Bucky, 20, deep fly ball to right. Griffey at the track. Corrals it for out number one. Shoeless Joe Jackson is hitless. The pitch to Jackson. And Jackson walks. Tying run comes to the plate in Chick Gandell. Chick Gandell. Nolan's a B pitcher. Sparky Anderson sticking with him. He deals. Possible wild pitch. Oh, this would be sweet. We need a six. It's a three. Johnny Bench blocks it. And that's it for Gary Nolan. Pedro Borbone comes in, and he'll have, because it is a righty-righty matchup coming out of the pen, he gets a check column against that three column, which is more favorable for the hitter usually, but not in this occasion, in this one at bat. Borbone to face Chick Gandell after the, the wild pitch. Sparky Anderson, Captain Hook, saw enough. Come on, Chicky, hit the red six. It's a three. It's a 33, and he lines it to center. And you can see that was the only thing in the three column. But now it goes to normal. Two outs. Jackson at first for Eddie Collins, who's three, three for three, three singles and a ribby. The pitch to cocky Eddie Collins. 21 fly ball to center. Geronimo Waits has it, and Eddie Collins is finally retired. And so are the uh, White Sox. We go to the top of the ninth. The 1975 Reds, four. The 1919 White Sox, two. Reds in good shape to go up four games to one. Uh, three games to one, excuse me, in this best of seven. Do up for Cincinnati. Griffey, Morgan, and Bench to face Seacott. Seacott really had one bad inning, the fifth. Here's the pitch to Ken Griffey, who has three hits, including a bunt single. He's three for four. Griffey bangs one to second for out number one. Collins makes the play as Griffey reached for that ball in the dirt. One out for the red second baseman, Joe Morgan. Morgan's tripled in two. He's also walked twice and grounded to second. The pitch to little Joe Morgan. Morgan strikes the ball well. It's either a single or a homer. Ballpark effect. It will be a single. As he laces a liner to center. One out, one on for Bench. Shock pounds the mitt. Sets the target. The pitch to his counterpart, Johnny Bench. Chopper to Gandell. He makes the play, advancing. To second is Morgan, as Gandell had to charge it. Flip to Seacott, covering the bag. 
one out Perez and then Foster do you walk Perez to set up the double play I say yes Shock stands up, puts his arm out, and there's the walk. Seacott to George Foster. And he strikes him out. Oh, Foster swung high and in at the flutter ball. As Merv Redman comes in to play right field, he has a much better defensive error rating. You can see 66, so he basically, he doesn't make errors in right. 4-2 to Cincinnati. Last call for alcohol at 2 You're through here at Comiskey. It will be Shock, Risberg, and a pinch hitter for Seacott. Eddie, uh, Ray Shock, excuse me, looking for his first hit off Pedro Barbone. The pitch from Pedro Borbone, who came in to quell the uprising in the bottom of the eighth, now tries to finish off the White Sox in the bottom of the ninth. Shock grounds it to John Vukovic, who throws a strike to Perez. One out. The White Sox down to two outs in this game. Borbone, a stern look on the mound. The righty's ready to work. Here's the pitch to Swede Risberg. Risberg, 32, and he jams him, pops it up. Left side, Vukovic waits for it, and that's out number two. Seacott will not bat. It will be the lefty, Eddie Murphy. Not that Eddie Murphy. He only had 35 at-bats, but a batting average of 486. Here comes Ed Murphy. He needs to get on to get it to the top of the order. Nemo Liebold. Borbone looks in at bench. Bench. Sternly looks out at Borbone. Pounds the mitt. The pitch to Ed Murphy. 15. He singles up the middle. Yes. So the seldom used Eddie Murphy singles up the middle. Tying run comes to the plate in Nemo Liebold. Odds of him hitting a homer slim to none. Borbon doesn't even look towards first. That run means nothing. He looks in at bench. He deals to Liebold. Liebold, 55. Hard hit ball to Morgan. Morgan's up with it. Throws to Perez. And the Cincinnati Reds are victorious 4-2 to here in Game 4. They take a three games to one lead in the best of seven series. And Charlie Comiskey is none too happy in the owner's box. Your winning pitcher in his first start of the series, Gary Nolan. He's 1-0. Seacott drops his second game of the series. He's 0-2. Is the fix in? Barbon gets a save, and the player of the game, Gary Nolan. So again, I've played a lot of games with the 1919 White Sox because they're a fascinating team to me, just like the 27 Yankees and the 67 Red Sox. They're some of my favorite teams to play, though I usually play against the Yankees. I play as the White Sox quite a bit, whether online or offline. And no matter what, game they have trouble scoring runs in these type of in these type of series or tournaments where they're playing teams from different de you know decades above them they don't score runs that's like the negro league teams i have the stratomatic cards i love playing them they don't score runs against the major leaguers if you don't get runs in your first four batters you're not getting any runs i've played enough of them but fun game. We're down 3-1. Elimination game up next. It'll be lefty Williams on the mound for the White Sox trying to stave off elimination. Highlight Heyday says, thanks for the game, Al. Enjoyable as always. Good night, sir. Good night to you, my friend. Remember to check out Highlight Heyday channel. We're looking for some more Tiburon Highlight, my friend. I enjoy that. They're fun games. You have a very fun, soothing voice. It's fun to listen to. You do a good job, and you do a marvelous job with the spreadsheet you use. The Cubs, the Bears is good game, a lot of fun. Yeah, it's it's 
I've you I've played the White Sox, nineteen nineteen White Sox, and out of the ballpark, action PC, strat, and uh, PC replay baseball. They just don't score run in these types of series. They don't score runs. Just like the uh, Satchel Page and the uh, oh, what team is it? But I love Satchel Page. He usually pitches well. They just don't score runs. Uh, it wasn't was it the Monarchs used, or is it no Pittsburgh Crawfords? I have that team with with the Pittsburgh Crawfords, and uh, I have a, I put a few games online a, a year or so back. Fun games. They just they don't score runs. You got to get runs with your first four to five batters. I mean, you could say that about any team, but really, uh, I, I the White Sox and the Crawfords are. I should play them against each other. That would be fun. All right, let's go again. The MVP, Gary Nolan, he did a fine job. Let's go to the box score, and we'll claw out a stream. Greatly appreciate everyone's time. Rose was 1 for 4 with a walk. I'm sorry, 0 for 4 with a run scored and a walk. Vukovic came in to play defense at third, did not bat. Uh, Ken Griffey had a good game, 3 for 5 with a run scored. Merv Redman came in to play right field at the end. He did not bat. Little Joe Morgan, 2 for 3, a run scored, 2 ribbies, 2 walks. Bench was 1 for 4 at the ribby. The ribby came on a sack fly for Johnny. No one's really, uh, none of the top, well, Rose is batting 333. I shouldn't say that. Griffey, 294. Perez, 1 for 4 with a run scored, a walk and a strikeout. Foster, 2 for 5 with 2 strikeouts. Cesar Geronimo, 0 for 4 with a strikeout. His batting average is still... 438 though. Concepcion one for three with a ribby, a walk, and a strikeout. And Gary Nolan one for three. Pedro Baborn got the save. He did not hit. For the 1919 White Sox, and they've got to win them all now. They're down three games to one. There's no more mulligans for the White Sox. Nemo Liebold, 0 for 5, now batting 235. Happy Felch, 2 for 4. So we moved him up to the two spot. He did it. He was two, but that horrible base running. He had a double. He tried to stretch it into a triple, and was thrown out by Geronimo as Rose applied the tag at third, and that cost us a run because Buck Weaver singled in the next, in the, the next at bat. Felch did score a run. He's batting three seventy five. Buck Weaver, 2 for 4 with a run scored. He's batting 267. Shoeless Joe Jackson, 0 for 2 with 2 walks. He's batting 267. Chick Gandell, struggling at 200. 0 for 3 with a ribby. Eddie Collins, who was below 100, went 3 for 4 as we dropped him from the 2 to the 6 spot. He's now batting 250. Ray Shock has struggled. We were hoping to get some offense out of our catcher. A pretty good hitter. He was 0 for 4. He's batting 154. Swede Risberg, 1 for 4, batting 231. Eddie Seacott, 0 for 2 with a strikeout. He's hitless in the series in two games. And Eddie Murphy, the pinch hitter, 1 for 1, now 1 for 2 as a pinch hitter, batting 500. So the Reds, in their victory, 35 at-bats, 4 runs, 11 hits, 4 ribbies, 5 walks, 5 strikeouts. Chicago, and yet another loss in this series, 33 at-bats, 2 runs, Nine hits, two ribbies, two walks, one strikeout. Ken Griffey made an error in right. A Swede Risberg made an error at short for the White Sox. There was only one double play turned in the game, and it was by the White Sox. Collins to Risberg to Gandell. That got Seacott out of a jam. Nolan gets the win. He's 1-0 in the series, seven and third innings. Eight hits, two runs. They were both earned. Walked two, struck out one. Bourbon went an inning and two-thirds. They actually took Nolan out after a wild pitch. Or a possible wild pitch. Uh, bench blocked it. and uh, Sparky Anderson said he'd seen enough. Let's go to Pedro Bourbon. Eddie Seacott went the distance. Nine innings, 11 hits, 4 runs. They were all earned. 5 walks, 5 strikeouts. He's not pitching bad. He's just not getting run support. Player of the game, Gary Nolan. Well, our next game, 
The lefty Williams will be on the mound for the White Sox, and he matches up again with Billingham. Lefty Williams is going to have to beat the Reds in Billingham again to keep this series alive. So again, I'd like to thank, excuse me, Highly Heyday. Check out that wonderful channel. The Great White Shark, the Cubs, the Bears. Thank you very much. Always good to see our good friend. And then from South Africa, Neil Hodgkinson. Thank you for stopping by. Hope you enjoyed the game. Jake Cruz, thank you. Dave Gardner, thank you. And Philip Reynolds, thank you. Stay safe. Be smart. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. God bless. Treat people the way you want to be treated. Greatly appreciate your time. If you enjoyed the stream, please smack that like button. If you haven't subscribed and you want to, please do so. If you do subscribe, hit the bell for notification when we go live. Till next time, peace. Love you all. See you soon. Bye-bye.